Welcome to my channel. My name is Alex and I travel full time with my cat and my FJ Cruiser. Sometimes we take the travel trailer with us, other times all we've got is our overlanding setup. Last week I shared how I met my friend Dustin for the first time in person and that he's now off on his own nomadic journey. Now we are still continuing south to Vegas where I still plan to figure out how to ride this thing. After leaving the Grand Tetons, I continued south to Vegas. However, that is a very long drive, so I was in Idaho for a brief moment, crossed back into Utah, and then made my first stop in Salt Lake City. Shadow and I camped at this boondockers welcome spot on a small ranch. Beautiful sunsets, great people. The lady usually had a two-day limit on her stay, but we got along so well that she invited me to spend an extra two nights. I then continued south to Apple Valley, Utah, where I stayed at another boondockers welcome spot. If you remember in a previous video, I shared that a host had tried to get me banned from the platform. This guy made me very uncomfortable when I was there, just super creepy, asking me tons of questions, hanging around my trailer for like an hour while I was trying to get set up. So I peeled out of there first thing in the morning and forgot to give him $5. So I asked him before I left if there was anything else I needed to do. He didn't say anything, so I left. And he trashed me in a review and made allegations, including that I don't know how to back up my trailer. Then he tried to bribe me. I did not like the way Boondockers Welcome handled it. Uh, Funny enough, he was the one who reported the incident to them, and they didn't ask me for any information to hear what actually happened or even reviewed the conversation. They only became objective when I sent full screenshots of the conversation plus videos of me backing up my trailer. So I don't know if I would ever use their service again, uh, even though it was the only bad incident I have, but that was a pretty bad incident, especially immediately after the Gabby Petito incident. I have a four foot by five storage unit in Vegas. And I usually use it to keep my out of season items, which for a while included my bike over the summer. So <laughs> I had broken the bike. It was still rideable, but I had broken one of the safety latches for the folding mechanism. And I found somebody who knew how to fix it and who also ran a nonprofit organization to give these bikes to kids. So I decided to give it away and get something else. I also had to do some touch-up painting on the RV. There's a difference in the size of the base for the old handles that were on the door versus the new ones. And we painted the door with the older handles on. So I had to take everything off, repaint, and then reinstall the black handles. Now it looks much better. And I promise you that's it. I haven't done anything else to the RV. You are now fully caught up. I'm really not big on cities, but I do like Vegas and my best friend lives there. So I made sure that he and I got to spend some time together before I left. He also had tons of my mail and a couple of packages waiting for me, like this very important upgrade to my bike. A lot of people have been asking me what am I writing in some of my photos and videos and at the start of my YouTube videos now. Uh, well, this is a Kiwano K01 Plus. It's an electric unicycle. When I first got it, it wasn't working properly. As you can see, it's supposed to self-balance, but it kept on tipping over. It didn't really inspire any confidence in me because I had already been told that it is very, very difficult to ride. So. I tried getting on there outside, holding on to the entrance handle for the RV. You can tell just how unbalanced and nervous I was. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna bring it inside because if I fall, I have much softer surfaces to hit inside the RV. 
And that definitely gave me a lot more confidence, but it still ran away from me because it wasn't properly calibrated. I called the company and was able to get that sorted out. Uh, if you want one, I'm sorry it's discontinued. I don't think any more of them are for sale. The drive from Vegas to Cali felt so much longer than usual that I actually stopped in the middle of nowhere and bought middle of nowhere gas and middle of nowhere prices. That was so high. I don't think I've ever bought gas for that much before and certainly have not done so since. Um, we also passed through 29 Palms, which is probably one of my favorite places in America. A lot of people don't know this about California, but it has the two largest marine bases in the country, I think probably the world. After that, I got to Joshua Tree, which is where I drove headfirst into that flash flood. So Google kept routing me off the main road, which is what this is, and through the back roads. And I was driving down the road and suddenly almost drove into the flash flood. I had to back the RV down the road. Miss doesn't know how to back up her RV, turn it around, and then drive back out onto the main road and that's when I drove through this. But as you can see, the water was not that deep. Uh, neither the truck nor the RV sustained any kind of damage. It did slow me down though. There was quite a bit of traffic. I will commend Cali uh, with how quickly they cleared the area. I mean, even while I was driving through it, people were clearing it and I was just happy to be back. I love California. People can say whatever they wanna say about Cali, but the people there are amazing. The community values are amazing and I've never had any problems there, not once. So as soon as I got to the spot that I was in, I decided to suit up and try riding this monstrosity again that I had bought because I really hadn't made much progress the last time. My RV was parked on a big sandy lot, so I figured I'd start my practicing there, but riding this thing on sand is actually really hard. It was way above my skill level at the time, so eventually I gave up and took it out onto the paved roads that ran through the trailer park. And that's when I finally started to make some progress with this thing. I just made sure that I got back inside once it got dark. So one of the things I learned the hard way about uh, RVing on this particular trip was even when a place has hundreds of reviews, four or five stars, it could still be the hood. <laughs> and this definitely was. Uh, this guy had multiple felonies was parked right behind me and was arrested. So why was I here instead of where I'd usually be in California? Well, I needed a spot that was cheap and that was close to Shadow's vet. He needed his kitty passport from Mexico, which is a certificate saying he has his rabies shots, he has no infections, and he has a clean bill of health for travel. Well, the issue is that Shadow is a semi-feral cat. He does not like strangers, and he's not a big fan of men. So um, the vet is a stranger and a man. So that was kind of interesting to see how that played out, which I'll show next week. I also got my first passport from Uncle Sam. I am Jamaican, so I've had my Jamaican passport since I was a child, but I've only been a U.S. citizen for about a year or so, so that was new territory for me. Next week, I'll also show you uh, crossing into Mexico and what my first impressions were of the country. So I hope you'll stick around and subscribe, and I'll see you next Friday. Bye.